Why did she put a scent? What kind of chemicals did she just put on her child's hair that ate through rubber? So this reaction is about as dangerous to touch as the milk bottle in your fridge. What? My wife left me last week to go to Finland. I was supposed to be joining her for a wedding, but the happy couple went ahead and got COVID. So the whole thing has been canceled and I've got some extra time on my hands. So what I decided to do was watch some Dr. Mike videos. And I found that there were actually some mistakes and inaccuracies in there. And I know that he, Dr. Mike's mission is to fight misinformation and he's got really popular in doing so, amassing almost 10 million subscribers. But it does confirm one thing to me, and that is contrary to popular belief, subscriber count is not proportional to medical knowledge. <laughs> Now, Dr. Mike has been open and has admitted that sometimes mistakes find their ways into his video, but the ones mentioned here haven't been spoken about by him before. And in the name of good science, I'm going to be setting the record straight. You might be wondering who on earth are you with that bookshelf in the background, making us think that you actually read the books on there? Well, the joke's on you because they're mainly photo albums. I deal with pictures and not words. I was elected to lead, not to read. So let's get into the video. Okay. The head of your bed somewhat. So you stay like this and gravity will keep the acid down. Don't eat so close to bedtime, at least two hours prior. Don't ingest things that create more acid secretion like caffeine, especially at bedtime. See, these are things that actually work that we tell our patients, not random things like rotate to the other side and that prevents gastric juice. Dr. Mike, I love you, but you're wrong. What? Sleeping on your left side has a significant benefit for patients with some gastroesophageal reflux disease and there's so much evidence to confirm that most recently of which Schutenheimer and colleague actually did a study using methods not dissimilar to pixie magic that assessed people sleeping on their right their back and their left and found that when they were on their left there was no acid reflux back into the gullet uh, which compared with the right and the back was a significant reduction and it was also a lot faster for the stomach to clear the acid as well. So that's why it is actually recommended by gastroenterologists to sleep on your left side. So I'm glad that you said this and made the mistake instead of me because my Arab ancestors would be saying something like, did you pass medical school or modeling school? Emotional, damn it! Why did she put a scent? What kind of chemicals did she just put on her child's hair that ate through rubber? So this reaction is about as dangerous to touch as the milk bottle in your fridge. So Dr. Mike uses the word chemicals to imply that it's something dangerous or scary inside the essential oils, but really chemicals and chemistry actually just mean any molecule that you can study. So even water is technically a chemical. But what about the actual reaction? So lemon essential oils contain something that's in lemon peel called limonene. This is approved as safe by the FDA for what it's worth, and it's in the peel of all citrus fruits. There's nothing specifically scary about essential oils that makes this reaction happen, and it's the same reaction that occurs when you put orange peel next to an inflated balloon, and it makes it pop. To understand more about why, we're gonna get nerdy, so stay with me. Both limonene and a rubber contain uncharged hydrocarbons, which means that rubber easily dissolves when coming in contact with limonene. So after bits of the rubber dissolve, it becomes weaker and so easier to remove in the hair tie or it causing the balloon to pop when it happens. See, nothing particularly scary. The next clip is about Dr. Mike reacting to something called supersize me. If you don't know what that is, it's when someone tried to eat only McDonald's for 30 days in a row and tried to see what the health implications of that were. So let's have a look. I think the saturated fats are starting to impede the blood flow to his penis and he's having a hard time, you know, getting it up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Dr. Mike, why are you nodding? It's saturated fat, not cement. Okay. Blocking your arteries is not like an on-off switch. It's kind of like a snowball rolling down a snowy hill. It takes years to develop the amount of blockage needed to cause the erectile dysfunction, and it wouldn't just reverse itself straight away when you come off the poor diet. What would be more likely in this situation is because he's eating McDonald's every day, he would be gaining weight, uh, as also was feeling depressed, and not getting enough vitamins and minerals. So you would have lower energy and testosterone levels, which would lead to the erectile dysfunction and all of the caffeine and fizzy drinks wouldn't be helping either. So another reason not to eat McDonald's unless you like soggy pita in your fetouche. What? So when you're uh, burning something, you naturally create carbon monoxide, which when you inhale actually binds with the hemoglobin in your blood, which normally carries oxygen and competes with the oxygen that you're also inhaling to bind to that hemoglobin, forming carboxyhemoglobin. Wait, actually sounds like Dr. Mike is saying that if you're next to fire, you could die from carbon monoxide poisoning, but he's left out the most important part, and that is that carbon monoxide poisoning only becomes a problem when a fire is left to burn in an enclosed space because uh, the carbon dioxide builds up and then you get incomplete combustion and you make carbon monoxide after. It's the kind of thing that happens when your chimney is blocked uh, or when someone starts their car engine inside a gar closed garage. So really not quite accurate and Uncle Roger would not approve of this since he hates induction stoves as you can see. Uncle Roger need the fire. Who use induction stove? It's so lame, so not satisfying. Technically appendicitis starts on the right lower quadrant but there's been stories of patients having it in the center of their abdomen then migrating to the right lower quadrant. Some people having uh, contralateral pain on the opposite side so like there's never a clear answer with appendicitis. Wait, 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 wait. No, there are clear answers when it's appendicitis. And let me tell you a story that proves so. Okay. Dr. Rogozov actually went on an expedition to Antarctic back in 1961 as the only doctor within a group. And as he got there, he started developing abdominal pain that he identified as appendicitis and decided to remove his own appendix surgically, survived the operation, and lived above 60 years old. Wow! I think that he was quite confident that it was appendicitis to actually perform that operation on himself. So there can be clear cases of appendicitis and actually 50% of patients present in the typical way, which starts in the middle of the uh, tummy and then moves down into the right lower quadrant. There is a reason why it presents like that and it's not just stories of, from some patients, it's because when the inflammation of the appendix, so appendix itis, inflammation appendix, starts, it starts from the inside of where the appendix is and moves to the outside. Now the inside part, when you're an embryo, actually is the mid gut. So no wonder that you get referred pain from inflammation of that area to the mid gut when the appendix starts. And as things progress, the inflammation moves out to the outside layer of what looks essentially human cling film. And that is much more location specific. And so then you feel the pain in the right lower quadrant. You barely ever, it's exceptionally rare that you would get left-sided pain with the appendix, unless there's a congenital malformation there uh, in appendicitis. Um, but what I think he's referring to is something called Rosving sign, which is where you press in the left lower quadrant and that produces pain in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen, which is much more common and can be a sign of appendicitis as well. That being said, we still get it wrong a lot of the time and actually in young children, about 50% of appendixes are removed when there's no inflammation present there at all. But that doesn't mean that there's never a clear course because quite frequently there is. 
So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you found it educational and useful. And I just want to say I do respect Dr. Mike and what he's doing and um, all of the, the information that he's spreading out there on social media. And you know, many of the jokes in here are tongue in cheek. And uh, I just wanted to set it straight, but also give a bit of entertainment while we're at it. Why not? Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you appreciate that my tie has changed. If you don't know why that is, you should watch my video on uh, house, three stories, which is just over here. Take care, stay healthy, stay happy, cook with fire.